Hey everyone, I'm Hashem, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to do a video about my favorite 35 mil films for shooting street, for doing street photography. It's something that I haven't done yet in all these years on the channel. And yet it's a question that I get every now and then people ask me for recommendations. So I thought I'd just do this video to share some of my favorites with you. I've got them up on the screen. So I'll share some examples as well. In case you're not familiar, you can see how I use them in application. But in order to keep it useful and somewhat relevant, I thought that I would only share films that you can still get so not expired ones and uh, ones that are decently priced so i will do a section at the end of the video where i share some past and expired hard to get films in case you're interested in that but let's just start off with the four favorite film stocks that i have to share with you in this video for shooting street and the first one which will probably not surprise anyone is ilford's hp5 400 this is such a versatile black and white film i personally love shooting black and white on the street so you can see in my uh, Lightroom catalog, I've got all the Ilford HP5 examples that I've pulled up. I've tried to mainly pull up examples from recent years because it was just easier. Uh, but yeah, if we look at some of these examples uh, that I have from Ilford HP5, you can see that it's just an all round versatile black and white film with decent contrast, which you can then enhance through editing, through pushing the film from its 400 uh, base speed to 1600 pretty easily and most importantly it's one of the more affordable options kodak tri-x might be just as good but i personally find hp5 to be a little bit more affordable and looks pretty much as good for most intents and purposes so yeah just flipping through a few examples here you can see it has a fairly decent grain structure especially with some of these two uh with these two sorry that i have pushed to 1600 and then others you can see where the grains a little bit less pronounced like maybe this one where it's probably been shot at box speed so there is a lot of variety within this one film stock from shot to shot but just all round has that classic look that you want or at least i want for black and white street photography and yeah that's why i just keep shooting for hp5 it's been years now that this is my main choice for black and white street photography but not my only one i do also shoot a lot of other black and white films. I really love black and white, but yeah, if I was gonna choose a favorite, this would easily be it. You've probably seen it in some of my previous uh, street photography, POV vlogs and examples. And it's not only even just street, this film excels in all kinds of things really. But if you're after alternatives to HP5, like I said, you have Kodak's Tri-X. It's just going to be a little bit more expensive in my experience. So I find HP5 uh, more accessible, cheaper, especially because I find the bulk rolls to be much cheaper and I do bulk load a lot of my HP5 historically, not always, but yeah, Kodak Tri-X and I think one of the best alternatives to HP5 is actually Kentmere 400. It's made by in the same factory pretty much and it's just a slightly lower grade version of it, but to be honest, in my usage of Kentmere 400, the results are pretty much as good. So if you can get your hands on Kentmere 400 for an even cheaper price than HP5, I would highly recommend that. It also pushes pretty well. I'm not sure if it pushes quite as well as HP5 to 1600, but I have tried it and it's been fine. All right, so let's move on to the next film stock recommendations and the rest of these are going to be color. The first color recommendation and the second recommendation for this video is the Fuji Superior series of film, mainly 400 because that is what the vast majority of these examples are from. But I know that some people might be able to get you know, like Superior 200 or Fuji Superior Premium 400. Part of it is that there's very little 400 speed, affordable 400 speed color films left these days. So Superior 400 seems to be one of the, the best ones over these last few years. I have shot a fair bit of it. And uh, yeah, it's a 400 speed film, which is great when you need that bit of extra speed on the street and it has decent colors and you can overexpose it a bit if you want to, it smooths things out a little bit and yeah, I've always found it to be a good choice for street photography. 400 speed does work quite well for for most situations, but between all the superiors, there's not a huge difference. Um, superior 400. This one here is superior premium 400. Premium, I think, is just a little bit finer grained, has nicer skin tones, a little bit less of the red cast throughout the image. But yeah, the Fuji superior line, the 400 speed is going to be an all round great choice for doing street photography if you want to shoot color and personally i would pick it over portra 400 for street photography i've always just had i have shot portra 400 but i find superior uh to have a nicer look that sh sh um, suits street photography sorry and all right in terms of alternatives for 
Superior 400. It's pretty much Kodak's Ultramax 400. I have shot that on the street. I prefer Fuji Superior. Historically, it's been a little bit easier to find in 36 shot rolls, which I prefer. It's been a little bit cheaper for some reason in those 36 shot rolls uh, because I used to be able to get three packs. I know it's getting harder now. I know Fuji Superior 400 might be on the brink of extinction as I make this video, hopefully not. But yeah, I had to include it in this video as one of my best all-rounders for uh, high-speed color film for shooting street. Okay, so let's move on to the next one, which might surprise a few people, but it's actually a 100 speed film and it's Kodak's Pro Image 100. If you've watched my past videos, traveling, doing street vlogs, all that kind of stuff, you'll know that I actually shoot a fair bit of Pro Image 100, especially when traveling, especially when I want to have a bulk amount of film because I used to be able to get five packs really cheap. Again, brink of extinction, things going up in price. This might not be as budget as it used to be, unfortunately but it is still a great 100 speed film and it's cheaper than Ektar and the colors are great. It is, it's a beautiful color film. And it's also going to be more suitable if you're the kind of street photographer who likes to shoot scenes that don't involve as much need to stop down or to use high shutter speed. So if you shoot these slower paced, you know, isolated scenes like this, Pro Image 100 is going to be great. You're going to get fine grain, really nice colors, less saturation than something like Superior 400, less grain and just a kind of like a, a cheaper alternative to Portra if you like those Kodak colors. Even if you have a bit of movement, you know, 100 speed film on a sunny or partly cloudy day is actually fine. So yeah, I'll show a few examples of Pro Image 100 just so you can get an idea of the look you can expect with this film. I hope I can still get five packs going forward. I know it's getting really hard to find film these days, but yeah, this film has a really smooth pastel look, kind of like people call it poor man's portrait and I can see why. It's quite versatile and I just love the colors I get from this film. Okay, uh, alternatives. I think pretty much your 200 speed films, like your common 200 speed films, you have Kodak Color Plus 200, Fuji C200 and Kodak Gold 200. Now those last two have become quite interchangeable over this last year because they're being reboxed as you know each other more or less. But despite that, I think I prefer the color and results I get from Pro Image 100 personally compared to all those other films, those 200 speed films. Even though I've used them extensively on the street as well, I've always preferred the results from Pro Image 100. It just has a nicer look to it. So even if I could pick, I would still choose Pro Image 100 over those 200 speed films. That one stop isn't a huge difference. So that is one of my top favorites for a low speed color film for street photography. Now let's move on to the, the last recommendation. Now this one is a little bit left a field and it's not necessarily too accessible, which is why I left it last, but I know a lot of people are keen on developing their own color film. So this would suit those types of shooters. And this film stock or film stocks, I should say, is the Kodak Vision series. So this is Kodak Vision 250D and 500T specifically. I'm focusing on those two because I have in the past shot through a lot of this film. I buy it in bulk rolls. You can see some of my past videos where I've talked about bulk loading and using these films and developing Kodak Vision films and they can really excel for street photography. So I have used 250D and 500T. Now why I've included both is because I find that they're not too different to be honest. In terms of the general look, they both have this kind of cinematic look that you might see in these thumbnails. Uh, I know that's a bit of a cliche term, but it's just, it's the unique look of the vision films basically. So yeah, whatever you want to call it, you can choose the 500T if you prefer that little bit of extra speed or shooting in a lot of artificial tungsten lighting, or you can choose the 250D, which I find is just a great all rounder. It can even work in nighttime and it's a little bit easier to scan. It's a little bit easier when you're self scanning to get good colors from 250D compared to 500T because a lot of people struggle with that blue cast. This one here is 500T, which will also have higher grain than the 250 but is a beautiful film, which again, it can excel with artificial lighting and when things get a bit darker. This is also 500T, even though it's in the daytime, you can see it works perfectly fine. And yeah, the vision films have this unique look, really nice detail, fine grain, uh, plenty of uh, latitude. So they're just great all rounders. If you can be bothered dealing with the Remjet and ideally developing it and scanning it yourself, you can get packaged 500T to 250D films ready to be processed by certain labs like we have 
the B2 lab here in Melbourne, which does them in ECN2. You have Silver Zyles in Germany. You have other options over in the States. But yeah, another 500T example, another one here. And eventually, see so it's still 500. Another example of 500 where you can see it really excels in those artificial lights, but it has that bit of blue cast, which is natural when you're shooting this late in the day. Um, again, another great example of 500T with tungsten lighting just balances out perfectly. Uh, but yeah, it gets a bit grainy here when it's underexposed. This one is with flash. And uh, this one is in kind of daytime golden hour. This is still 500 and now we're on 250. You can still see that 250 shares a lot of the same characteristics of 500. It's just finer grained and I find it just has a little bit more color pop in the daytime. It has more pleasing colors. Another thing worth mentioning is that 250 works really well at nighttime too. Even though it's not the tungsten balanced option, I have shot it uh, even like, I think way back in Japan at nighttime and it's one of the, the best looks I think at night, surprisingly. When you're scanning digitally, honestly, it doesn't matter that much. There's not going to be a huge difference. So having that 250 option means you're just going to get finer grain and detail. And yeah, I like that. So that was the fourth favorite that I like shooting on the street. And if you're after alternatives to that, the most accessible alternative would be the the versions of this film that are sold without the Remjet layer. So obviously you have your Cine still 400D and um, Cine still 800T, uh, but they are quite expensive. So I wouldn't call them that much more accessible compared to bulk loading this film especially. So then you have the packaged uh, alternatives, so the cheaper versions of Cine still basically, like you have Reflex Lab here, they have the 400 and 800, which are actually just the 250D and the 500T. And then you have other versions like Halide Supply here in Melbourne has the Mars 250D. And then there's so many variations of it, which have the Remjet removed. So if you shoot any of those, just keep in mind uh, that you will get that halation effect that is the same as Cine still. I personally am not a fan of that, which is why I like and recommend the original Kodak Vision 3 stocks. But again, you may not find it accessible. So you have those alternatives at least. All right, so those are my four favorite film stocks for street photography currently in terms of things that are still accessible that you can still get your hands on for a decent price. But if you're interested, I have a little section at the end here where I've noted down some of my past favorites and maybe overpriced things and things that are hard to get. The very first one is the Fujifilm Superior and or Natura 1600 film. This was a beautiful film stock. It was a high speed film stock. It worked well in a variety of situations. I believe that both of them, I personally think and in my testing that they are exactly the same film stock with different packaging. It was a great film stock that was sadly discontinued that gave beautiful colors and gave you that extra speed when you needed it for shooting at nighttime, for example, where now you don't really have any 1600 speed color films. So that actually leads to the second one, which I was sad to see go that is no longer available. And that is the Superior 800. I'll put some examples up on the screen because I have shot a fair bit of this in the past and I might even have a roll or two left in the fridge, I'm not sure. But this was a great all-rounder because it was that perfect speed of 800 where you could overexpose it and tighten up the grain a little bit or underexpose it, shoot it at night. And it also had great colors. And it was uh, historically quite an affordable and cheap film stock when I used to shoot it. It used to come in three packs, Fuji Superior 800, three packs. I think in Japan, they had five packs. We might even had five packs here for a while. So yeah, that's just a, another one I was sad to see go. So if you can get your hands on some of this kind of stuff on eBay or online or from a friend, I definitely recommend using it on the street. I think it works quite well. And uh, the third one is also sort of related to that. And that is Lomo 800. Great film stock that used to be quite affordable in three packs and has skyrocketed in price over these last years. And unfortunately, I can't really recommend it anymore because I don't think getting that extra stop of speed is worth paying for uh, Lomo 800 or Portra 800 for that matter. I think Portra 800 is brilliant on the street. I have used it when I've had my, got my hands on it for a decent price, which is hardly ever anymore. But yeah, those 800 speed films are kind of all bundled into one of the categories that I like, but aren't among my top four or five anymore because they're just a little bit less accessible or affordable. So yeah, that's pretty much it that I had for this video. I just thought I would share some of my favorite film stocks for shooting street. Again, I have shot a lot of other film stocks on the street, but these are some of my top 
favorites, most commonly used ones and ones that I thought were worth uh, recommending because you can still get them for uh, decent prices and availability is somewhat there. I know film's hard to get now, but yeah, what I'd like to hear in the comments is what's your favorite film stock for street? Is it just one? Is it two? What Do you have a favorite color and a favorite black and white? Share it in the comments. It'd be cool to see the common denominators pop up and I think HP5 is definitely going to be up there. But on the other hand, I know a lot of people use film stocks like Portrait 800, which is nowhere near in my top five. So I'm quite interested to see how different my favorites are to, to yours watching the video. So let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you on the next episode of Pushing Film.